Welcome to the Django Project, DJ Blogger. This tutorial is part of a YouTube Django Project playlist, which you can access in the video description. You can watch the whole course from the very beginning. If you enjoy this course and would like all the updated tutorials and associated code samples and more, you can check out this course and other courses this project features at Udemy. The link to the course is in the video description. Ultimately, our Django application will reside on a server, which will then serve to the rest of the internet. The public will be able to access our application. Now, if you consider the fact that that is one environment, and then obviously we're going to be building this application on our local machine, and that's a different environment. So potentially we're running our Django application in multiple environments. So potentially we're going to need to configure settings, different settings for those different environments. So what we're going to try and do here is configure our application to have multiple settings files in preparation for us to both deploy onto a server and to work with our Django application on our local machine. A quick overview of the project files and folders. When we created a new Django project in the manner in which we did, we created this outer DJ blogger folder and we had an inner DJ blogger folder, which is our main project folder. You can see that we have a manage.py file that now is going to replace Django admin. So instead of typing in Django admin like we did before, we can now use manage.py to send commands to our Django application. Inside of our DJ blogger folder here, you can see we have the settings file, the main settings file for our project, as well as some other files which we would chat about or interact with throughout this project. At this point, I won't go through the different settings that we have in the settings file here. It's kind of irrelevant at this point. I will introduce them to you as and when we need them. So our goal is to separate or to have a way of modulizing the settings files so that we can run different settings files based upon the environment in which our Django application is working within. So the first step is that we're going to replace the settings file with a settings folder. So let's create a new folder here inside the DJ blogger in a folder here, our main project folder. We're going to call that settings. And then inside of here, because we want to access this like a module, um, we want to access this. We want to be able to import resources from this folder. We're going to create this new file, the, the init file, .py. And then what we can do is just go ahead and add our settings file inside. So let's move the settings file inside of this folder. Now this, if you are new to Visual Studio Code, that can be a little bit um, difficult to see because it's not so obvious that you've moved it inside of that folder. So just uh, make sure you run down these lines here and make sure the settings file is definitely inside the settings folder. Okay, so with that in place, let's open up the terminal. I have a drag up uh, from the bottom here, or I'm going to press the, the shortcut keys on mine. So or alternatively go to view and terminal, whichever way. So from here, I'm going to try and now actually start my project again. So dot slash mode dot pi. Or actually, I first need to make sure that I'm in the right directory, ls. So you can see that I am in the directory where manage.py is, so I can call it. So manage.py and then run server. So because I've changed where the settings is, notice now it says you must set settings. So what's happened now is because I've moved settings, Django can no longer find the settings file. So let's have, take a look at where the settings file is actually being called when we start a Django project. So let's go into the manage.py file here, and that's where we're going to find the settings. So here you can see that when we run the application, it's going to be looking for the settings file inside the DJ blogger folder, this one here, the main product folder, and then settings. So we do have a settings folder but we haven't specified in the settings folder which file we want to include. So we can extend this with a dot, and then we're gonna say we want to run settings.py. Settings, sorry, just settings. So uh, let's go ahead now and run the server again. And there we go. So you can see that the server is, is now running on our local host again, and we should be able to access it as normal. So our goal is to be able to set up different setting files, modules for different environments. So let's change settings. Let's call this base. 
what we can do is we can create a base file and then we can create individual files for different environments and we can inherit, we can include all of the different settings from base into our new environment file. So this is base, we've changed settings to base and then we go ahead and create a new file here and I'm just gonna call this local.py. So this is gonna be my local settings file. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to basically uh, import everything from base. So I'm gonna say from dot base, so dot being the directory that I'm currently in, dot base, let's import all. So basically I'm just gonna import all of these settings when I call this module here, local. So now then, let me just turn the server off, control C. Let's go back into my manage.py file. I'm just gonna delete that, manage.py file. So now what I want to do is not run settings, I want to run local. So notice I don't have anything in local other than this import here, but remember I'm importing all of these settings. So if I try to run the server again, I just press up to bring up the previous command. Up and down, I can bring up previous commands. And then I press enter and you can see that the server will run as normal. So I can do the same thing again if I wanted to set up a, a separate file here for, for example, the production server. So we might call this different things. I'm just gonna call this production. Again, new file, production. So the same price, dot .py, of course. Let's quickly rename that, because it needs to be a dot .py file. So same thing again, I can just import everything from base and that will work as normal. So potentially at this point, when I know that I want to, for example, deploy my application and run it on a server, I could manually just change this to production and use the production settings. There is of course a more automated process here or a more automated way of doing this. So let's go back into settings and learn one of the different settings. So inside of our base here, we have a setting here called debug true. When set to true, whenever we experience any problems in our application, Django will give us a more detailed overview of that particular error. So the whole point of debug true is that it allows us to configure Django to give us more information about problems with our application. And this should be used when we're developing our application. So by setting debug to false in production, it means that any of our sensitive information won't be shown. So we can get a little bit busy up the top here in the tabs. So what you can do is just uh, use the dot, dot, dot menu and just close all. And you can then go ahead and use this option here. And that just closes everything down. And sometimes it can be useful as our folders get nested and deeper. And as we build more applications and so on, it can get a little bit difficult to uh, see exactly where we are and navigate around. So that can be useful. Right, so having now no, now having knowledge about this setting we have here, this debug setting, true and false. It does mean that whenever we deploy our application to a server, our production server, it is going to be set to false. So with that information in place, what we could do, for example, in our manage.py file here, we could set a condition here so that if that setting is true, we're gonna run local. If the setting is false, the debug setting is false, then we're going to run the production settings. So let's set that up right here. So we need to read the debug variable from base. So let's say from DJ blogger dot settings. So DJ blogger settings and base. So let's uh, import base. And now what we can do is we can check if debug is true or not. So if base dot debug, that's true. So if true, if the debug is true, it's returning true, then we're going to run the local settings. Else, we want to run the production settings. So if debug is set to false, we want to run production. So production, there we go. So that should now run different settings based upon the debug. And of course the debug is going to be important based upon what environment we're working with. Now there are other environments in which we want to potentially run our application. So this isn't necessarily going to fit every scenario, but I wanted to give you a general 
um, way of potentially managing your settings files based upon a local and production environment. And of course, as we move through the project, we'll learn how to maybe separate some files, sorry, separate, separate some settings in our local and production settings here based upon the environments that we're working within. Let's just test this out. So I'm going to clear that. I'm not sure what's happening there. So manage to buy. There we go. So debug is on is true. So notice that it does tell me when I run the server, if I move this up a little bit, it does tell me what settings I'm using. It says Django version using settings, and these are the settings. So it does indicate what settings I'm using. So let's go back into the base here. Let's change the settings to false, just see if it works. False. Now the problem we've got here is that it's going to tell us that the allowed host need to be set. So let's just set this to, to all. And then we try that again. And you can now see that we're using blogger settings production. So we've changed debug to false, assuming that we're now going to deploy to our server. And you can see now we're using the production settings.